2024 wedding design trends, let's go. Big hair, silver medals, layered prints, groovy vibes, Bridgerton has camped out and decided to stay, big bows and a little bit of grungy western spacey cowboy to round everything out, and there you have our 2024 wedding design trends in a nutshell. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jamie Wolfer, I am your online wedding planner and I'm here to help you plan your wedding, save money, Plan easy and stress less because you deserve a stress-free wedding day. We do that through a whole myriad of ways. One, these videos online. I invite you to subscribe. Go on down there, click that subscribe button. I post videos every single week. I invite you to enjoy some of those. I've been doing this for five years. There's like a, a, a plethora of uh, videos for you to explore. The second way that I help you out is through my email list. Email lists generally are garbage and I hate 99% of them. However, mine is special and different. <laughs> Because what I do is I will actually, by getting your wedding date, I can email you all the things you need to be focused on in chronological order, which makes things really helpful so you don't miss a single thing. Might I recommend starting off with my wedding planning checklist. Uh, it's right here for you to check out. It's the ultimate wedding planning checklist. It has everything you need on it to make sure you don't miss a thing while planning your wedding. And that will get you intro into our email list. And the third way is through my online course called The Master Plan. But it's not just like an online course that like exists out there in the ether internet, whatever. Included in this course is everything that I use to walk all of my long-term planning clients from point A to wedding day uh, <laughs> with all the cheesy rhyming analogies of all time. Mm -hmm. But an additional thing that we do over there is I do live monthly phone calls with you guys, me, in real time, answering your questions. Because while online courses are great and super helpful, I happen to really personally enjoy that medium. It can be really difficult if there's not a real person to ask some of these live questions to. And so we show up, we do a Zoom call once a month, I'm there for you, we can do this together, and so you don't have to plan this wedding alone or without a wedding planner. Now, for the meat and the potatoes of today's video, we're going to be talking about 2024 wedding design trends that I think are definitely going to be up front and center or like slowly creeping onto the scene over the next handful of months that we will probably see either fully come to fruition by the end of the year or just some inklings of it because design doesn't know a beginning and an end of a year. So allow me to step on my soapbox for but a moment. Design is a, dare I say, a social construct. You don't have to follow anything I say in this video. If you already have vibes ready for your wedding, don't worry about it. These are just fun things to take a look at and get excited about if perhaps you would like to move away from some of the other things you've already seen in the wedding industry and you're looking for something that feels a little bit more fresh. This video is not here to tell you that your wedding design is outdated, <laughs> not trendy, overdone. We're not doing any of that because again, Trends don't have an expiration date, okay? We're just talking about some new ones that we're tossing out on the scene. Oh, and by the way, speaking of timeless design style, this video is sponsored by Generation Tux. If you've been around here for longer than a minute and a half, then you will know that my favorite suit rental company, the only company I would trust my brother's wedding with is Generation Tux, but I'll get to why they are so awesome about what they do in just a little bit. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. There are two decades that are going to be heavily influencing the design trends that we are seeing in weddings this year. Now we've seen a lot of one of these decades kind of influencing things for a while. Um, and this second one kind of started to come up on the scene, I would say 2022-ish. So we've seen this kind of building for a little bit, but that is the 70s and the 90s. What I think is really awesome about these though is that the 70s walked so the 90s could run, all right? There are so many crossover designs that we see from these fashion aesthetic trends in these decades uh, that it's really neat to see how they are transpiring now in 2024 and how they're affecting what weddings look like. Now in sourcing where this design inspiration was coming from, there are two places that I looked. I'm not gonna lie, I did scour the internet and looked for wedding trends, but that seems more like event trends and less like wedding aesthetic. So I wanted to do this one first because like, I love wedding design. <laughs> I'm a cheese ball. I love it. One of the places I looked was Pinterest. They release a trend prediction every single year and this year's predictions did not disappoint. So I hand selected a few of those that really strongly apply to wedding design aesthetics. And then I actually started looking at some home decor blogs and home decor accounts for their predictions of what they saw coming up at this next year. And I found some fascinating correlations. So let's dig into them, shall we? Number one, this is not home decor related, but you will find it in the 70s and the 90s. And that is big hair. I don't know about you, but my feed is clogged with gorgeous, gorgeous girlies trying to show you how to do a faux blowout. Velcro rollers are all the rage again. We saw this very popular in the 70s, very popular in the 90s. Thank you, Rachel. And of course, are seeing a resurgence of it again, especially when it comes to wedding hair. Now remember, this isn't the only wedding hairstyle you're going to be having here, okay? It's just this is a newer, fresher take, something a little bit bigger, okay? The second thing we're going to be seeing a lot of is move over gold, move over brass, move over copper, silver is back, and she's ready to party. Again, caveat, although I'm currently wearing silver, I am a warm yellow gold person that works better with my person. So don't wear silver if you don't want to. 
But if you're looking to be inspired when it comes to your centerpieces, when it comes to the metallics that you're incorporating into your event, whether that's on your shoes, whether that's in your jewelry, or if you're doing some sort of metallic overlay on your invitations, consider adding in some silver for a fresher take on something that we've seen played out so beautifully with all of these thrifted gorgeous brass candlesticks. I love, I own about a million of them myself. I'm not getting rid of them. They're here to stay for me in my home. But perhaps if your local thrift store happens to be out of everything of the warm tonal variety of metallics, start looking into some of the silvers, the pewters, the nickel, as a means of still capturing a metallic texture on your wedding day, but trying something a little bit fresh and something we haven't seen in a little bit. And of course, going back to the two decades that we're discussing, 70s, we've got disco vibes, right? We've got disco balls. Those came back on the scene a couple years ago. They're here to stay. Let's keep working with those. Let's keep playing with those. Keep using those in weddings. I think that that's something that's gonna stick around for a hot minute. It was probably not going to go anywhere for a couple years. But also in the 70s, we saw really funky silver shoes. We saw some pretty dramatic silver makeup. We saw a resurgence of this again also in the 90s. I got two words for you, Cetus Lapidus. And I know it's 99, okay? But technically it's still the 90s, although I might I recommend to not wear tiny CDs as your earrings. Just don't think it would quite vibe, okay? Now a wedding specific Pinterest prediction was groovy weddings. I'm going to read what they have here specifically. In 2024, 70s inspired weddings will make a serious comeback from disco decor to bohemian bachelorettes boomers and millennials are behind this retro inspired return to the dance floor so let down your feathered hair and say i groove Ooh, <laughs> i mean it's cheesy but i see where they're coming from we've already had a lot of this boho 70s inspired look hanging around for quite a few years so now we're gonna kind of see it lean into a little bit more of the groovy feeling which can include a lot of bright colors a lot of that metallic tone and a shocking amount of blue makeup now this is another one of those 70s, 90s trends that's like coming back around. Pinterest said it's coming. I probably won't be joining them on this, but you might happen to see quite a bit more of blue makeup, of blue beauty trends. This is kind of haunting for me. I'm not going to lie to you because there were people that I knew in junior high and high school that wore a, a, a metric ton, a metric ton over the school career of, of blue eyeliner or blue eyeshadow. You know, Britney Spears, God bless her. She 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 started us off with that like soft blue eyeshadow look. <laughs> just and then it did and then and then and then it swept the nation. But while it may not be on the top of my own personal preference list, I think we are going to see quite a bit of this resurgence, especially for those who really want to make a bold statement on their wedding day. They're probably gonna be including some blue, which again as we've seen throughout this video, is very 70s and very 90s inspired. Now, the next few design predictions I've kind of seen in a myriad of different places, but one of my favorite sources for just design inspiration in general, and I highly recommend you do this as you're getting ready for your wedding, don't just focus on wedding stuff on Pinterest. Look for design outside of that. And one of the probably most iconic YouTube wedding home decor designers of our day and age is Drew over at Lone Fox. And he recently released a video talking about 2024 home decor trends. And I was like, Drew, friend, you are also very accurate when it comes to wedding predictions. And I don't think you knew that, but I just want to say thank you. And one of the things he mentioned is layered prints. I think we're going to see a lot of this when it comes to invitations and when it comes to bridesmaid dresses specifically. Perhaps you have your invitation printed on one type style of paper, but your RSVP card printed on another. We're going to see layering of those patterns and those textures, possibly some more envelope inserts, really kind of playing with these different patterns and giving a visual textural experience for your guests that will help to set the tone of what your event is going to feel like as well. This could might lean into um, some of the linens that we'll have on wedding days, maybe napkins, maybe overlays. I'm not entirely sure how strong people are going to go in this direction, but it could be something that would be very fun if you're trying to think of something different to do with your tablescape. Consider something printed instead of just a solid color tone. Another prediction of Drew's is a warm mid-tone wood. We've seen for a long time like the war between the light tone wood and the dark tone wood, and I think we're probably going to land somewhere really sweetly in the middle, like a good mid-toned walnut. Not a poplar, not an espresso, but something right in the middle. Could lean a little bit more honey, could lean a little bit more of like that true walnut color, a little bit more of like a warm slash gray tone. But if you're considering adding in wood tones for your event um, and possibly staining anything, maybe more of like the special walnut variety, that's the lighter one, right? 
that might be a good stain to go for. And now let's talk wedding colors. These do not all go together, okay? We're just gonna talk about prevalent colors we might be seeing in the next wedding season. First and foremost, we are going to still be seeing a lot of browns. I actually was able to interview Liz from Generation Talks a couple years ago. We had her over here on the channel. We talked about design trends for 2022, um, and I didn't do one for 2023, probably because I was pregnant and very tired. But they literally predicted this. They knew that we were gonna have this trend of brown suits making a comeback. And guess what? Brown is here to stay, baby. Whether it's in your home or on your wedding party, we are seeing a much higher prevalence of people choosing brown over a traditional black or blue suit. Now, here's why I love Generation Tux specifically. Well, one, they have brown suits. They saw the trend coming. They were ready. They're both inspired and inspiring. But on top of that, they offer free swatches to send to you so you can do perfect color matching. There's over a hundred color options to choose from. So whatever tie, whatever pocket square, whatever suit you want, you can get the actual physical fabric sent to you and to the members of your wedding party. So you can take those with you when you're shopping and do really good color matching and really good color comparison. Because if you're spending all this time getting your wedding party to look good and cohesive and getting all of your wedding color palette put together, you wanna make sure that anyone out there shopping independently knows what color they're going for. So that's why I love Generation Tux and their free swatches. I'm gonna go ahead and link it up right here for you to check out. If you wanna check out their brown suits, I actually really love them because it's a good, true, darker brown. It's not too much of a bold statement, but it's just enough of a difference to kind of make a subtle standout. So if you are trying to figure out what to do differently with suits for your wedding party this year, might I highly recommend checking out Generation Tux. And or if you feel like honoring the passing of our sweet Miss Chanan LeBong, consider a brown suit from Generation Tux. I'll leave that in the description box below if you missed the link previously. In addition to brown, we are probably going to be seeing some more of that red burgundy tone, possibly in conjunction with that brown. Now we're not gonna be seeing like a bright schoolhouse or barn red. Instead, we're going to be see more of like a warmer muddy tone. It could be like a brick red or more of a warm burgundy tone. These when layered on top of each other give a very autumnal feel, but are also conveniently very 70s and very 90s. So you can see how these color trends are really repeating themselves. So there's nothing really new under the sun. We're just kind of circling through all these different fun trends. And this is what we're focusing on right now. I think it was Architectural Digest I was reading recently that predicted the comeback of chartreuse. And when I tell you this is the not so dark horse that I was not expecting? Where? When did this happen? Hello, welcome back. But this also strongly ties into the other predictions we've seen for groovy wedding vibes that we've seen on Pinterest, right? Chartreuse is the perfect shoe in. So if you're looking for something a little bit funkier to incorporate, you could probably find some chartreuse florals or bridesmaid dresses or put on your invitations or use as part of your stationery or your signage on your wedding day. Which again, while it's not exactly my personal cup of tea, I think a lot of people are gonna have fun playing with this in a really bright, colorful way. And I think it's gonna be a really fresh take on some of the more colorful palettes that we see to incorporate this really vibrant tone in there. And of course, we have to give a polite nod to the Pantone color of the year, Peach fuzz. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, when I first saw this, I was like, what in the peach fuzz is Pantone thinking? Because that is like, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like new desk, you know? It's like this, it wasn't, it didn't feel inspired. And then I thought about it, and you know what? You know who did this to us? The Bridgertons. The Bridgertons did it to us. Because you know what else we're gonna be seeing a lot in 2024 is pastel palettes. A lot of them. And peach fuzz is leading the charge, okay? So again, at first I was really hesitant to accept this, and I think we should be pretty careful incorporating this because different skin tones do not look great in this because some skin tones are gonna look pretty washed out um, in this specific color because this will not suit all skin tones for sure. But if you happen to be going for that more pastel approach, this could be a really fun color to incorporate as a part of the cornucopia of pastels you might be presenting on your wedding day. Wait, I completely forgot one of my favorite things that Pinterest said is going to be an up and coming trend and there's a reason that your girl is covered in half fake turquoise and half less not so fake turquoise and that is because western gothic is up and coming on the design trends now i've called this western grunge for a while and that is a really cool mix of like grungy and western aesthetic so how does that translate into wedding looks specifically well we might see a lot more brides swapping out their brown cowboy boots for some black ones incorporating silver with some turquoise on it to really lean into that funky rocker aesthetic of like i don't care and look how big my hair is again big hair blue colors interesting that this is kind of all working together right if your eyeballs have not met 
ZZ Ward, it's going to be ZZ Ward in wedding form. I think we're still gonna be seeing a lot of those custom black leather jackets, maybe with a few less cow skulls on them. That one might be a little bit more played out, but really leaning into a more authentic and textural experience when it comes to that Western grunge effect. So what do these look like in stylized terms? What are these wedding themes? So bringing these all together, here are the four themes that I think we will be seeing out of wedding design this coming year. Number one, groovy weddings, all right? We're talking some bell sleeves, bell bottoms, clothing with the word bell in it. All right, really vibrant colors, chartreuses, maybe some of those bright blues incorporated in the wedding makeup look, hanging onto those disco balls, bringing in some of that silver metallic. We're also going to see a lot more of the 90s chic. Y'all know what I'm talking about with those champagne towers, the slick back bun, the clean it girl aesthetic gone wedding vibes. A more structured bodice when it comes to the top of the dress, maybe more of a square or a boat neckline and very large bows. Large bows in the hair, large bows in the back of the dress. Maybe we're gonna do some more stackable bows. We see Pinterest predicting some of that as well. So that 90s chic aesthetic married with that it girl aesthetic I think is going to be super fun for the clean girlies, if you know what I'm talking about. Lots of Bridgerton vibes. We cannot escape this family, guys. We cannot escape them, okay? But if they don't make a musical one day, I might riot. There, I said it. Pastels, over the top florals, pastels, over the top florals. In the words of Lone Fox himself, a little bit more of that coquette style, a little bit more of that femininity, a little bit more of that softness, that romantic vibe kind of infused into the pastel color tones as well. Those darn Bridgertons just won't leave us be. They're ruining everything in the best way. And last but most certainly not least, Western grunge. Black cowboy boots, leather jacket, big 70s hair vibes, maybe working some turquoise, a little bit of that like I don't care, but also my dad's a rocker. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like, it's a feeling, you know? <laughs> But we can also see the guys ditching their ties all together, maybe opting for some bolos, maybe going unbuttoned, definitely leaning into that more of that aesthetic and having some more fun with a grungier, more laid back style with some Western notes as well. So that's all we have for this video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Again, please remember design trends are just here to be fun. There is no expiration date on these designs, okay? You do whatever you want for your wedding day and have fun with it. If you happen to be inspired by any of these things, that excites me so very much, but please don't throw out your wedding design simply because I said silver might be up and coming and you bought all gold, okay? Because at the end of the day, all that truly matters is that you are excited about your wedding day and you're excited about the person you're marrying. Now, if you happen to enjoy good wedding design, might I suggest following us over on Pinterest. I'm gonna go ahead and link it right here for you to go check out. And any of the other links you might have happened to miss, I will link that in the description box down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Generation Tux, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and thank you for being trendy. As always, y'all called brown years ago. How did you know that? Do you have like a, a crystal ball or something or just like can predict design trends years in advance? mythical wizards. And if you'd like to see more of these wedding design trends that I've been talking about, please feel free to check out our Pinterest where hopefully you will be even more inspired. If you haven't done so already, jump on down there, hit that like button if you like this video and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day.